Oh, it looks like you're overloading your truck. It's a lot of sag on the back end and, you know, valid, valid points. Now I have gotten this truck weighed and um, I am fairly close on total payload. Um, each axle, both the front and rear, have several hundred pounds of, of room left. So I'm not, I'm not overloading the truck. I'm not overloading either axle. Uh, I, am, I am safe, um, but I am getting a decent amount of sag, which is a little disappointing. I wish that the, the extra leaf spring that was on here did the job, uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't cutting it. That sag was causing when we would hit some bumps, particularly, uh, particularly common around that bridge uh, transition. You know, you go over an overpass and it goes from from asphalt to concrete. There's always a little bit of a bump there, and it would, it would give us a quite a big jolt inside the car. And what's the big deal with a little rear end sag? Well, a little isn't a big deal. Unloaded trucks are naturally higher in the rear because they're designed to work. A load is expected and it's going to compress that rear suspension a little bit. Now, if you have a lot of sag, your truck is going to be less able to handle sway and roll. There's gonna be less suspension travel, meaning a worse ride, and maybe you're gonna bottom out on bumps. Now, if you have way too much sag, this is definitely a signal that you have an overloaded truck. This can cause your headlights to point up instead of onto the road, and if you have a travel trailer, you have to be especially careful here because you might be lifting your front steer axles, reducing your steering control. With a fifth wheel, the weight of the fifth wheel goes directly onto that rear axle. So all of the weight is going there. And you're, you're not gonna see as much of a, of a lift. With a, with a travel trailer, it's, you, you sort of have a teeter-totter situation where that, that rear axle is your, is your fulcrum and the, the trailer, instead of being mounted right over the axle, is mounted further back. So it actually lifts. It doesn't just cause the truck to sag, it causes the truck to lift. And in the, in the front of the truck, you end up with those front tires starting to come off the ground and getting less grip. And so that becomes a, a more dangerous situation with a, with a bumper pull than with a, with a fifth wheel. Fifth wheel, fifth wheel comes and it puts the weight directly over this axle, right? There's, as I move my finger back towards the bumper, just a little bit of weight back here does this. So that's what I'm talking about. In a travel trailer, you're putting your weight back here and you're lifting these wheels up. You know, in reality, they're not gonna actually come off the ground. They're just not gonna have as much weight uh, pushing down into the road surface, meaning they're more likely to slip. On a fifth wheel, that weight's all going right here and you're not going to get that lift the way you do on the travel trailer. Your weight distribution hitch, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go find out. A weight distribution hitch will, will help bring the weight towards uh, the front of the truck as well as push some of the weight to the back to the trailer um, to help you even out. Now what I am suggesting that is a good idea for, for fifth wheels does not translate to someone pulling a bumper pull. So uh, what I ended up going with was Timberins. I'll put a link in the description. I bought them from, from e-trailer. They're not paying me for this. Um, I've been buying from the, quite a few things from them. I will buy more from them in the future. Timbrins, which are essentially a bump stop replacement. The bump stop that comes with the truck is, is this sh is fairly short, hard piece of rubber, and it doesn't give much. Timbrins are longer so that they come in contact with the axle sooner and then have a, a more varying degree of, of hardness. So when, uh, when I have nothing on the truck, like right now, there's a, about an inch gap between the timberins and the axle. So essentially when I drive it around empty, nothing happens, no difference in the ride. When I put the fifth wheel on, it pushes down and those timberins start to squish a little bit. And so now as I'm driving down the road, I've got that extra rubber bushing in there, um, giving me a little bit of, of an extra cushion while I'm towing the fifth wheel. 
it has helped tremendously. It has, uh, when, I, when I go over those bridge transitions that I'm talking about or other bumps, I'm not, getting, I'm not bottoming out anymore. It's made, uh, it's made a big difference. Uh, my wife agrees. I agree. <laughs> the trailer has the Reese goose box hitch. So instead of a traditional fifth wheel hitch, we remove that piece off of the trailer and we have a, just a, a tow ball in the back of the, of the truck like you would have for a, a regular gooseneck um, and then the, the trailer sits there. I, you know, I say this because the Reese goose box has an airbag in it that I can adjust to, to different pressure. Um, I, I, some people have it up around 50. I think, I think JB, uh, Justin from JB Reviews said he has his around 48, 49. Um, I used to have it uh, around 41. Since I put the Timberins on, I softened it up a little bit down to like 39. And, um, and so I have that adjustment there. So some people might say, hey, Ryan, you should have gone with airbags. And the thing is I already sort of had an airbag in the system, so I didn't think I really needed it. On, the, on a previous truck, I did have airbags, and I had the Firestone airbags, and I had them set up where I could pump them up manually. And I found that to be very frustrating because every time I got somewhere and unhitched, the, this I had a travel trailer at the time, every time I unhitched, I had to you know, bring the air back down, but I had to still leave like five pounds of pressure in there because um, you don't want to bottom out and damage the airbags. Uh, but then on tow day, I'd have to load them back up and if you, if you left them loaded up with, you know, 15, 20 pounds of air and you didn't have a trailer, the ride was terrible. But even when you dropped them down to five pounds of pressure, they made the ride worse. So at all times unloaded, the ride was worse than with Timberins. I, I put Timberins on the AT4 HD that I had uh, and I liked them a lot. And so they were an easy choice to put on here. You, once you install them, and they install them like 20, 30 minutes, once you install them, uh, you're done. It's, it's nice and easy. Uh, and then you never have to think about them again. Right? You put them on and they're there. Done. Here we go, in place. You can see these screws, uh, these two bolts on either side. That's exactly where the factory bump stop was. I just. Uh, took those two bolts off and replaced it and this is the the gap where the contact is right so right now it's unloaded there is about an inch of gap and once once that weight gets on there it just kind of closes up does the job if you want uh, a timber and setup on your truck and it's a lifted truck you can actually buy additional spacers and you can add them underneath in order to get uh, you know, a taller setup in order to get to that inch, inch and a half gap. Of course, this is, this is upside down, right? So these spacers will go in just like that. All right, just for fun, this is what it would look like if you had two spacers on it. It's, uh, it's been a, a nice upgrade for us, uh, very economical. Uh, the price was uh, far less costly than an airbag setup. If I were to ever do airbags again, I would do the, the setup with the air compressor, the tank, the whole deal. Just getting the air compressor and a tank and, and, the, uh, and all the hookups for that is gonna cost at least 500 bucks and then the airbags are five or 600 bucks. So you can, you can spend quite a bit more um, than you would with, with Timberins. There's no adjustability, but um, I don't think that's a big deal. Also, like I said, I already have a little bit of air pressure adjustability in the, in the hitch itself. All right, that'll do it for today. Thanks a lot. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and hopefully we can get you some more videos. I'll see you in the comments.